see all of you out this evening on this winter night. Dr. Jack Haskins, professor at University of Tennessee, spent 12 years researching the effects of media on how people think. One study attempted to determine the impact of a five-minute radio program that was filled with negative news stories. 17 children blown up on a bus. Earthquake that killed thousands. Riots in the street. And so on. And a group of people listened to that every day. Five-minute radio programs. Just listen to that every day. There was a control group that listened to a more positive, uplifting news every day, five minutes per day. Haskin discovered, discovered four discernible effects on them. People that, the group that listened to the negative news program every day, this was his findings. They were more depressed than ever before. You ever watch the news? After you watch the 11 o'clock news and you get ready to go to sleep, are you more depressed than ever before? Okay. That group believed the world was a negative place. Duh. They were less likely to help others. They began to believe that, that, that what they heard would soon happen to them. Their concept of reality was shaped by their thoughts. The thoughts, think about this, the thoughts we entertain in our minds become the thoughts that guide our lives for better or for worse. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Significance. Significance. Last week we ended with Adam and Eve falling and significance. Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says, Then God said, Let us make humans in our image, in our likeness. Let them rule the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the domestic animals all over the earth and all the animals that crawl on the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. He created them male and female. Adam did not have to search for significance because he was significant. His significance was an attribute of creation. Have you ever felt an emptiness in your heart? Like there was a hole in your heart? There was no emptiness in Adam's heart. He did not hunger and thirst after righteousness because he was without sin and he was consciously in the presence of God all the time, day and night. He was there. God walked with him. He was there in the presence of God. He didn't know what it was like to feel insignificant. I mean, think about it. He had a job. He had a life. He worshiped God. What more could he ask for? He was significant. He was important. Everything was great. Everything was perfect. And God saw it, and it was good. However, Satan wanted dominion over the world. So he had to orchestrate the downfall of Adam. Thus, temptation and the fall. And that had to come to over that had to take place to overcome the effects of the fall. And then because of the fall, Jesus would have to destroy the works of Satan. This is another reason why God sent Jesus to the earth. 1 John 3:8 says the person who lives a sinful life belongs to the devil. Because the devil has been committing sin since the beginning. 
reason that the Son of God appeared was to destroy what the devil does. Adam and Eve had significance. Do you have significance? They also had safety and security. Adam and Eve were safe and secure. They had everything. There was nothing they needed. It was all provided for them. It was all there. They had safety. God watched over them. God gave them everything. After the tragedy of 9-11, all of us remember that, our president and Congress created a Department of Homeland Security to deal with the threat of terrorism to help us sleep better at night. How many of you sleep better at night knowing there's a Department of Homeland Security? That department helps us deal with our insecurities. Are you feeling better and more secure? How many of you called up ADP and got rid of your security system on your house? There. Yeah, mom didn't turn hers on. She still pays for it every month, but she didn't turn it on. Their effort is commendable. Their effort is commendable, but it's not enough. There is no way that we can control every human on this planet. There is no way that we can control their movements or, or seal every border that we have. Jeremiah 6.14 says, They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially, saying, peace, peace. But there is no peace. There will be no external peace in this fallen world until Jesus comes back. There is one main reason we don't have the right or the ability to control everyone. The peace we have in Christ refers to an internal order, an internal peace not the external order of this world. Jesus says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. What's he talking about? An internal peace. Internal fear. Are you safe and secure tonight? Are you significant tonight? Adam and Eve had a sense of belonging. He belonged to God. He belonged in the garden. They had a relationship. He had an intimate relationship with God. But there was a more but there was more than that. But there was more that God gave Adam. In Genesis 2:18, the Lord said, "It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him." Adam and Eve had a sense of belonging not only with God, but also with each other. Life was good. Life is good. They had an intimate relationship with each other, and they had an intimate relationship with God. However, after the fall, that intimate relationship was gone. Most believers today don't feel like Adam and Eve felt before the fall. We put on a good face. It's a face that I would call a Maybelline face. You know what that is? You put on a lot of makeup. Okay? You put on a lot of makeup. You, you know what I mean? Uh, you, you, I, I've always said that um, the bathroom is the greatest cause of divorce on Sunday morning. It really is. I mean, you get up on Sunday morning, What's the biggest fight? Over who gets in the bathroom first? 
especially if you have teenagers and teenage girls, right? Right? I won't point anybody out, but some of you have teenage girls. You fight over the bathroom, and you fight all the way to church about who took the longest to get into the bathroom and get out of the bathroom. But as soon as you hit the church parking lot, and you step out of the car, and you see the elder there in the parking lot as well, praise the Lord. God is good. What a glorious sunny day today. Isn't it a wonderful day to praise and worship the Lord? Wow, didn't we have a blessed week today? Did you see the ball game? God really blessed us out on the field today. Aren't you ready to go in and praise the Lord and worship the Lord today? And then you go in and worship the Lord and praise the Lord and you have your Maybelline face on, your makeup face. And uh, the whole time you're in worship service and you're praising and singing and praising the Lord, you may even say amen to the preacher while he's preaching, right? Amen. But the whole time you're saying amen and listening and singing and praising the Lord, you're thinking about she had the last word before I got out of the car, and I'm going to have the last, first word when I get back in the car. And as soon as we, you get out of church and you get back in the car, you pick up right where you left off because you get the cold cream out and you take your Maybelline face off. Okay. We put on our masks. We wear a mask hoping others won't sense what is really going on inside of us. S suppose, suppose, I had the opportunity to get to know you, to really know you, to look deep inside you, to look past your mask, to know you intimately, to look at your inner self, to see your thoughts, to see your heart. If I was able to do that, do you think I would like you? Do you think I would like you? Josh McDowell writes this. If you ever put a price tag on yourself, it would have to read Jesus. His death on the cross was payment for your sins. You are worth Jesus to God because that's what he paid for you. In his book, Shaking the Foundations, Paul Tillich adds, you are accepted. You are accepted. Accepted by that which is greater than you. Do not try anything, anything now. Perhaps later you will do much. Do not seek for anything now. Do not intend anything. Simply act the fact that you are accepted. If that happens, we experience grace. Remember that little boy? That little boy we saw last week? That little boy who wore husky pants? There he is in the back. That short little boy who was picked last for everything. He still struggles with his weight. Little boy who had problems in school and studies, still struggles with reading and comprehending things. 
Little boy who had trouble with fitting in, as well as trouble with fitting in according to the world's standards. But the little boy today stands before you. He knows who he is in Jesus Christ. Because one day, Jesus got a hold of his life. Jesus got a hold of his inner man, of his inner self. And today, I belong. I'm significant. No matter what the world says, no matter what anyone here in this room says, I matter to God. And that's all that counts. Even though I walk this earth, there is one day, as I said last week, I will be absent from this body. But I will be present before the Lord. Let me leave you with some last thoughts. And I've got a handout for you because I'm going to go through this really quick. Okay? Because I've only got a few minutes left. Let me leave you with some last thoughts. A mind flourishing with deep truths of God is a powerful tool in his hand. If you want your life to dramatically change, to get out of a rut of destructive emotions or bad habits, it all begins with what goes into your mind. With that, memorize and meditate on this verse, Philippians 4 8. Most of us know it, we've heard it a hundred thousand times, okay? Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Now I want to tear it apart really quick. Most of you know I like to do word studies, so I want to tear it apart really quick. First part is dwell. Dwell means deduce, reason, calculate, ponder, deliberate, subject, protracted, analyze, thought. It implies to think about the matter long enough to take into account its character and realize its implications for your life. And thinking about overcoming a negative self-image, think on the positive things, dwell. Think on it long enough. You are significant. Who are you in Jesus Christ? I matter to God. Dwell on that long enough until it becomes a part of your character and who you are. And that those implications to your life. So what is the truth? We dwell on the truth. Think about things that are objectively true. Things that conform to reality. Before you put something in your mind, ask yourself, is it true? Is what you're about to put in here true? Because what you put in here is going to stay with you. It's like what you put on the internet is going to stay there forever. Whether you go back and try to take it off, it's still there forever. The same is true here. Okay? Honorable. This word also means grave or worthy of respect. It refers to those things that reflect to serious purposes of a believer's life. Before that movie, commercial, or conversation goes into your mind, ask yourself, does this honor God and reflect his purposes for me? How many of you watched the Super Bowl for the commercials? Does this honor God and reflect his purposes for me? Just a Right. This word implies justice and righteousness. In the New Testament, it's used to refer to the character and actions of the Father and of Jesus. It is a picture of duty. Before you spend time thinking about something, ask yourself, or wrong. Right. Pure. It comes from the same root word as holy. And means to be pure from defilement of, or 
immorality. It carries the idea of internal integrity. Ask yourself, am I thinking in things that are pure and holy? Lovely. It means attractive, winsome, or beautiful. It pictures things that call forth a response of love and warmth from within us. Ask yourself this question. Is my mind filled with beauty? Lovely. Of good repute. The general sense of the world of the word is admirable. But its literal meaning is fair speaking. In other words, are these thoughts fit for God's hearing? Are the thoughts that I'm thinking fit for God's thinking, for God's hearing? God knows what's in your mind. Is what I'm thinking fit for God's hearing? Anything worthy of praise. These last two thoughts are a summary category for anything that has moral excellence, motivates us to godly behavior, or encourages others to walk with God. You see, how we start to change our internal self, our inner self, which reflects our external self, is we start here in our mind. Anything worthy of praise. So what's Paul telling us? Get your thoughts right. Get your thinking right. And as you get your thoughts right, the emotions, behaviors, and consequences of peace will follow. A spiritually trained mind will align everything else to such a degree that emotional issues will begin to be resolved and behavior will begin to fall into place as you get your mind right. It'll change your inner self. In your table discussion tonight, you may want to think about these questions or you may want to talk about some of the things that were presented tonight. Have a good table.